To this day, it's a tall order for an international League of Legends tournament to topple over the twisting, turning, wild ride that was the 2015 World Championship. In terms of storyline, star power, and all-around hype, 2015 had it all. And coming into the tournament, the eyes of the world were locked on China and Korea. China's LGD Gaming, headlined by defending world champion Imp, was a huge favorite to make some noise. Korea's SK Telecom T1, who featured some serious stars and longtime franchise players in Faker, Bangi, and Bang, were an ever-present threat with a star-studded lineup. Before the tournament even started, these two teams were penciled in as the favorites to meet in the Grand Finals. But Riot had a trick up its sleeve that would ultimately change the course of the tournament and League of Legends history. Before Worlds even kicked off, Riot introduced Patch 5.16, colloquially referred to as the Juggernaut Patch. This update and its surrounding patches at the back end of the summer significantly reworked several champions in the game. Darius, Garen, Elise, Skarner, Mordekaiser, and even Gangplank all became high-priority champions as a result of the patches leading into Worlds. Overnight, some of League's forgotten champions saw 100% pick and ban rates at the World Championship. This huge patch right before Worlds completely upended everyone's expectations for the tournament, throwing the state of the professional meta into complete turmoil. To make matters even more interesting, the developments to the meta unexpectedly continued throughout the tournament itself. During a quarterfinal match between Fnatic and Edward Gaming, a game-breaking bug surrounding Gragas had been discovered halfway through the World Championship. This moment was a turning point at Worlds 2015 because Gragas was one of the most popular champions in the jungle position. The bug forced the champion to be banned globally for the remainder of the World Championship, ultimately shifting the jungle meta in favor of champions like Elise and Rek'Sai. With so many changes before and during the tournament, fans were beginning to question the integrity of Worlds altogether. As for the quality of the product on the Rift, things certainly took a turn for the unexpected. There were teams that excelled in the new meta, and those that failed to adapt. In the span of just a few weeks, favorites became long shots while underdogs became sudden contenders. One example of a team that struggled to make waves at Worlds under the influence of the new meta was LGD Gaming. The top seed out of China went from a surefire lock to excel at Worlds to getting knocked out in the group stage with a disappointing record of 2-4. Oh! 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 With losses to teams like Origin and TSM in groups, LGD was quickly shown the door, leaving room for newfound challengers to step up and fight for the Summoner's Cup. The most notable challengers at Worlds 2015, however, would hail from the EU. Although Fnatic and Origin had been incredibly dominant on the domestic level, the two teams came out of nowhere to reach the semi-finals at Worlds 2015. Back goes to Origin, here's the battle, Karsa alone in front, absorbing, gets dunked, so as is online, they pulls down, he's still going, he doesn't get the third as Azonius comes across, he gets some damage on his stake, he gets the Breakthrough performances from newly christened European superstars like Hootie, Niels, and Febivan carried two of the top teams from EU all the way to the top four at Worlds. But while Europe emerged as a genuine contender on the international stage, the one thing that remained consistent among the chaos was the absolute dominance of Korea. The region had won back-to-back -back World Championships in 2013 and 2014, and this time around, the expectations were no different. All three teams from the region made the knockout stage at Worlds 2015, as SKT, Ku Tigers, and KT Rolster all made it out of the group stage with ease. Once the knockout round began, the Ku Tigers and SKT both advanced to the semifinals, where each squad would face off against one of the rising European teams. SKT would face off against Origin, while Fnatic would go head to head against the Ku Tigers in a true battle for supremacy. Niels forced to run away, flashing under his own turbo. Faker says, No, thank you. I want this kill anyway. Make that three picked up. Now, so has joins the fight and says, hey guys, make it four, and they make it so. There we go. Massive lead SKT. The way they juggle the tower act origin it's for an all their worth. Of that. And now Faker is in. Soaz has no chance of getting away. Hex Drinker, you barely even saw it. Back in. The event horizons come back off cooldown. And it's once again locked Fnatic out. Yellow Star's already down, as is Hooney. Ku are looking for a rampage. Gorilla jumps forward. He manages to find another as Smith's running down Febivin. Fnatic get ace and lose the Baron. 
The strongest region in the world was looking to extend its dynasty of dominance, while the up-and-coming stars from the West looked to put a stop to any inkling of Korean superiority. Naturally, both SKT and the Koo Tigers won their semifinal matchups in convincing 3-0 fashion, setting up an all-Korean final. SKT had been on everyone's radar coming into Worlds, but as the team racked up more and more wins, it became painfully clear that this was SKT's world. We were just living in it. After blazing through groups with a perfect 6-0 record, SKT toppled over AHQ and Origin in clean sweeps during the knockout round. turn around now. They have Prey in the perfect spot, and they take down Prey. They take down Gorilla, and it's just chaos for Koo. They cannot find the right positioning. A double kill as well for Bay. Everything once again for Koo being used in defense when they want to try and get an offensive list. SKT coming out much stronger. Maybe this is the Pandora's box. We see a Raptor cloak on Wolf as well. They're going to be going for the turret. That's going to be an inhibitor. 45 seconds on the curl. Gorilla just came up. Does Koo have what it takes to keep their dreams alive for the Summoners? It does not look good for Kuro and his team. Koo Tigers are falling. SKT will be your first ever two-time world champions! By the time they defeated Koo Tigers and raised the Summoner's Cup, SKT had finished the World Championship with a near-perfect record of 15-1. Since then, no team has matched the level of dominance that SKT did at Worlds 2015. Even one year later, when SKT repeated as World Champions, the organization didn't come close to one-upping its performance from the 2015 tournament. Despite an incredibly strong level of competition and a complete upheaval of the game itself from Riot, SKT didn't just weather the storm that was the 2015 World Championship. They were the storm. And five years later, it's worth looking back at Worlds 2015 simply because it served as a landmark moment in League of Legends history. The landscape of the game shifted completely just weeks prior to the tournament, forcing the teams present at the event to adapt harder than ever before. The competition at the World Championship is often difficult enough, but with added surprises from Riot itself, Worlds 2015 stood out as a game changer in the broader scope of the game's lifespan. Now Riot has learned its lesson. Big meta-altering patches are usually implemented after Worlds or sometime around the halfway point of a given season. Looking back though, it'll always be fun to remember the tournament where bizarre champions like Mordekaiser, Darius, and so many others were finally given a chance to shine in the spotlight, while top-tier teams like SK Telecom played the hand that Riot dealt them perfectly.